Hello all. Welcome to today's session of modeling of solar cell and MPPD in MATLAB. Of course, this session or this video is been recorded specifically for the learners who are willing to understand solar cell, then the data sheet of solar cell, mathematical modeling of solar cell and its implementation in MATLAB. This video is also going to cover the MPPD algorithm, use of MPPD, concept behind the MPPD, and then basic algorithm, which is used in common mode, which is perturb and observe, called as PA and O algorithm. While doing so, we will be designing a boost converter, and hence, this video is going to be a little lengthier one. I recommend you all to go through the video completely, try to see the video in sessions, and then try to model it in MATLAB. I am very sure that after completion of this video and implementing it in MATLAB, you will be definitely able to get the same results as like the video. And you will be definitely gaining some knowledge from it. I really hope and wish you the best. Let's move forward for the understanding of this course. So contents of the video are going to be Analyzing the data sheets for and study its parameters. Then equivalent circuit model of the solar cell. So here we will be discussing how does actually a solar cell looks like or rather can be electrically defined. Then equations involved in the modeling of solar cell. So whatever solar cell circuit model we are going to understand in the previous content, we will try to narrate it in terms of electrical quantities or some equation or parameters. After that, understanding of these equations, we will be trying to model the equations in MATLAB. Exactly same equations which are given in theoretical understanding will be demonstrated in MATLAB, which are can be categorized into a MATLAB model of photon current, then MATLAB model of reverse diode current. And then once we are done with the solar cell modeling, we will be generating the IV and PV curves of the solar cell. While doing so, we will be understanding how the standard solar cell curves look like and how we are getting the curves through MATLAB. Once it is done, we will need a boost converter to boost the voltage of solar cell as it is generating a variable DC voltage. We will be boosting it to a constant DC voltage and, and doing this process, we want our solar cell to operate at the maximum power tracking point and hence we will require MPPT. So basically MPPT is nothing but the pulse generating option which is controlling the IGPT or any switching device used in the boost converter. After that, we will be seeing a complete MATLAB model of boost converter and that MPPT model of MATLAB, which we have conceptually learned in this concept, we will be implementing it into MATLAB and then we will be providing the pulse generated by MATLAB to the boost converter and at the end, we will be able to generate the block diagrams. After that, we will be analyzing the MATLAB model, which has been done at the end and we will be verifying the MATLAB model for different changes in temperature and irradiance. Okay, so let's move towards the first point of our content. And I request you to please stay calm as this is going to be a very lengthy video and try to understand the things. Now data sheet of a solar cell and its parameter. First of all, whenever you are going to see a solar cell or solar panel, you could only see a blue colored panel in which you can see silver lines. But one panel consists of number of cells. Those cells can be connected in series. And hence, as per depending on the solar cell panel, you will need to understand how many cells are given in that particular panel. So standard light intensity, which is given by a solar output or solar rays is nothing but 1000 watt per meter square. So watt per meter square justifies that how many watts are occurring on one meter square area. Standard reference temperature is going to be 25 degrees Celsius. But obviously while manufacturing process, we are going to uh, we are going to convert it into Kelvin. So we will see to that. Then series resistance for data sheet is 0 0.008 ohm. Shunt resistance is 1000 ohm, 
short circuit current is three point eight. You will be under uh, uh, thinking about like from where I got this data. So let me go uh, go back to the data sheet of this particular model. So I'm using this particular data sheets SP two fifty watt thirty six volt. You can use any different uh, data sheet also depending on your requirement. So I'm using the values given by this particular data sheet. So manufacturer gives us electrical specification for this particular polycrystalline solar cell. So this is useful for mono and polycrystalline solar cell. So model is SP250W and th for 36 volts. So these are going to be the parameters for this particular solar cell model. You will get any other data sheet so you can use your parameters, but make sure that you are going to get these number of parameters for your data sheet. In case you are able to find out any data sheet which does not gives you these factors, let's say ideally fact, ideality factor. So you can replace those your factors with my values, but your values or output voltage may get vary based on your values. Okay. So let's move forward with understanding of equivalent sale of solar cell. As like in the start, I told you that how does a solar cell or PV cell looks like. So it is going to be a this kind of panel. If you are able to see, visualize that it is going to be a panel. So which will be a blue or black colored one. And it will have some silver lines between it. Monocrystalline will look like this one and polycrystalline will look like this one. So uh, these are the arrangement of the cells and every cell. So this is one cell. This is second cell. These are connected in series to generate higher amount of voltage. So number of cells justifies how many cells or how many voltage we are going to get. So every one individual cell generates some current and that current is getting modeled in terms of these three factors. So this is equivalent circuit model of PV cell, which consists of a photon current. We can call it as IL or IPH also in our equations. So IPH into the system, reverse diode current. The diode is connected to the downward side. So ID should be getting subtracted from IL. If you try to apply the Kirchhoff's voltage law, or sorry, Kirchhoff's nodal law at this particular node, what will happen? IL is coming into this side. ID will be going downward. Then remaining current is moving forward. ISH is going downward. And then remaining current going to the RS. So I, which is been the output voltage can be modeled as IPV is nothing but the current given by the solar cell at VPV, the voltage given by the solar cell for respective shunt resistance and series resistance. So RS is the series resistance. Obviously, this value is going to be very, very less and RSH is going to be very, very high. The reason we know that if RSH is not higher, then higher current of ISH will go through this and it will get lost through this higher RSH. We want higher amount of current to be flowing through the system and hence RSS will be very small, least resistance upward and RSH will be very high so that it will push higher amount of current towards the output side. And as RSH will be higher, we will get some voltage peak. We will come back to this circuit diagram when we will be modeling the diode current. So I hope this is clear to you. So this is what we are going to model in solar MATLAB. So we will be modeling one photon current. We will be modeling the reverse diode current. We will be having this RSH, RS, and then we will have the output for, as per this diagram only. So we are going to handle this diagram only. This is what equivalent circuit of solar PV cell is. Let's see and uh, understand how these things operate. Okay, so let's try to understand how the currents are going to be. So what I have just said that this is going to be IPV. This is IPV. And this is VPV. Now, if you look at the nodal analysis at this particular node, you can see IPV, which is nothing but this current, is IPH. This IPH is nothing but photon current. 
minus id so this is id so iph minus id minus ish is nothing but your ip so i hope this equation is very clear to you now let's see how we can write down equation for ish this is ish we are to we want to subtract this value of ish from iph which is going to be a constant source so ish is equal to if you apply a kirchhoff's voltage law at this particular loop let me clear all the drawings so if you apply kirchhoff's voltage law in this particular loop you will be writing this as voltage across rs so the current flowing through rs is nothing but ipv so voltage across rs is nothing but rs into ipv and this is vpv so you can say when we are writing a voltage for voltage across rsh it will be ish rsh so ish multiplied by rsh equal to plus ipv rs plus vpv so this is this gives a kirchhoff's voltage law so we have ish rsh is equal to vpv plus rs ipv rsh is coming to this side rather we divide it by rsh so we get this equation ish is equal to vpv plus rs ipv upon rsh i hope this is clear to you the other equations are iph now we have seen three currents so il the iph id and ish so we have seen the basic equation of ipv now we need to find out the values of iph then id and at the end ish so we are ready with the equation of ish now let's see for iph and id so for iph we will this equation is given by standard uh, theoretical references so it is given by isc0 multiply by g upon g0 into 1 plus alpha 1 into t minus t0 so iph is nothing but a photon current it is nothing but the current equivalent to the energy given by solar rays on falling on the solar cell so this can be equivalently called as the watt per meter square effect so it can be modeled into the solar cell current as isc0 so this is short circuit current 0 which has been given by data sheet so you can see isc0 short circuit current is 3.8 ampere for this particular data sheet so this is isc0 the g which has been available at the location so at your place you may see that the watt per meter square can be 600 or 700 but the standard and maximum value is 1000 so g0 is the standard value and g is the value which we are we are going to feed for our simulation then 1 plus alpha 1 alpha 1 is the temperature coefficient of voltage so this is going to be uh, observed by data sheet so you can see the data sheet let me show you so in every data sheet you will find out these coefficients so power tolerance is 0 0.03 here and accordingly you will be able to see the values of these coefficients so c for that now alpha 1 into t minus t0 so t stands for the temperature at you are operating and t0 will be 25 degrees celsius so t0 and g0 are the constant values g0 is 1000 and t0 is 25 obviously t0 is in kelvin so we will have to convert 25 degrees celsius into kelvin which we are going to add as 298 now id diode current so we are ready with the photon current we need to understand diode current so diode current is given by the reverse saturation current of the diode so you might have seen this uh, equation so i0 is the uh, reference current and which has been modeled in this equation so i0 multiplied by exponential vpv plus rs ipv upon n into eta so make sure that you are not confusing between n and eta n stands for number of solar cells connected in series and eta is nothing but 
the Boltzmann constant. K, K is the Boltzmann constant. Eta is ideality factor, which we have seen. So ideality factor is 1.2 for our case. So eta K is Boltzmann constant. T is the temperature and Q is charge on electron. So we'll be modeling this equation in MATLAB. And the I0 value is given by I0 reference into T upon T0 exponential Q E upon eta K T upon Q 1 minus T0 T 1 upon T minus 1 upon T minus T. So better you write down these equations, try to understand them once and find out all the values. So while doing a MATLAB model for the solar cell, you should have each and every value for this thing. The variables are going to be only G and T. Apart from that, you should know the values of all parameters available here. The N in our case is N in our case is 36. Then Q will be 1.6 into 10 raised to minus and the charge on electron E is going to be the voltage. So accordingly, we will model. So when we summarize all the equations that we have seen, ID, IPV is equal to IH minus ID minus ISH, ISH, replace all these values in this particular equation. So IPV is equal to ISC0 into G. This is equation for IPH minus I0 into this value. So here we need to put down the value of I0 reference. Okay. And this is VPV into this is equation for RSH. So let's try to understand how a solar cell can be modeled in MATLAB. So this is a current controlled source. Why current controlled source? Because we are operating on current sources, but we want to control its value based on the equation. So we need to model this particular equation. So we basically need two current control sources. So one is uh, one will be reflected as the photon current. Another one will be reflected as diode current, but in the reverse way. So both will be provided with certain values and we will be able to find out the remaining value. This RSH is connected in series. RAC should be connected. Uh, sorry, RSH is connected in parallel. RAC is connected in series. And after that, we will able to use the signal routing so that we can use the voltages at different values. So you can see while modeling these equations, we need IPV and VPV at several intervals. So we will have to continuously measure it through IPV and VPV blocks, the voltage measurement and current measurement blocks. If you find any difficulties for understanding the MATLAB simulating, I will, I have this uh, video recorded for basics of MATLAB simulating and you can see through it and you can use these blocks from that video. We will be modeling this equation. After that, we will be converting the photon current. So you can see we will have to connect one expression or one equation through photon current, another equation for the diode current. So two controlled current sources we will have to analyze. So based on this diagram, we will be modeling the solar cell for which we will need a photon current, one diode current and then this diagram. So we will be measuring IPV and VPV. If you find any difficulty related to how to generate or how to start MATLAB or how to generate the codes in MATLAB or how to use Simulink and how to bring these many blocks in MATLAB Simulink, then you can watch my previous videos on MATLAB, which has been pinged in this video. So you can follow that and then proceed with this particular simulation. So let us move forward for understanding the photon current diode and diode current mathematical modeling. So you remember this is our photon IPH current ISC0 G upon G0 1 plus alpha 1 into T minus T0. Now in MATLAB, we can actually model this mathematical expression with the help of tools like this is a gain block. I will be showing all this in MATLAB Simulink window also, but just for starting purpose, we will be seeing through the presentation. So this is our G reference. So standard irradiance input value, which has been given to A. So this is given value 
assume that it can be a 600 or a 700 watt per meter square it is given to a gain block and you can see the value of gain block as 1 upon 1000 so 1 by 1000 justifies your g upon g0 so g0 is nothing but 1000 so this is 1000 for g0 which is standard watt per meter square which is given to a multiplication block then it is fed with the g so we are having this is g so g multiply by 1 by 1000 gives you g by g0 then the another multiplication is 3.8 you remember we have seen isc0 is equal to 3.8 from our data sheet so this is your 3.8 then we need to model this particular 1 plus alpha into t minus t0 so this was our g this is the temperature at which we are going to operate our solar panel so it is room temperature or available temperature we need to convert that temperature into kelvin so by adding 273 we are actually getting t in kelvin and this temperature we are going to use in several places so we are using a signal routing block from block and call it as a temperature temp so temp wherever we are going to connect Every time it will showcase whatever value you are, let's say you are putting it as 28 degree. So 28 plus 273, it will be 301 kelvins. So 301 kelvin will be reflected everywhere uh, we are requiring this temperature block. Then we are, we need this T minus T0. So T0 is nothing but 298. Because in math, in manufacturing data sheet, it is given that the standard temperature is 25 degrees Celsius. So in standard temperature 25 degree, if we model it into Kelvin, 25 plus 273 will become 298. So we will have to add plus and minus. So this is our T minus T0 block at this particular point. Now this is multiplied by 0 0.024. 0 0.024 is nothing but alpha temperature coefficient. Then this alpha is mathematically uh, multiplied with this t minus t0 and here we get this particular signal alpha 1 into t minus t0 at this particular point now we need to add one in so again i will have a sum block and summing block with the constant magnitude of one will give you a one into one plus alpha into t minus t0 now we have this particular bracket then G upon G0 and ISC0. So we can multiply all these three. So here we have G upon G0 point here, here ISC0 and here 1 plus alpha 1 into T minus T0. So this way we can model the equation in MATLAB. Let's see the MATLAB simulating for this particular part. So This is our photon current. You can see a gain block. So 1 by 1000. So here we are uh, putting a value standard reference and which is nothing but 1000 and it is multiplied by the actual reference value. And this is a multiply block. So you can get this block. So you can get this block with the name of product or if you want to drag it down from library, Open MATLAB library. It will take some time to load. So in Simulink, in commonly used blocks, you can get it. So constant is one we, we are using for constant. You can see this gain block we have used for this. Then input port for this one. This out port will be will be using at the end of the IPV and VPV block. This is sum block. So this is your sum block, and you can add or multi increase or decrease the number of additions. So let's say if I add one port earlier, it was this way. If if I add one plus sign here and add, you can see num number has been increased. See, again, I want to reduce it to two input addition. I can re back likewise. I 
have one plus and minus sign. So it will reflect like addition and subtraction of two signals. And hereby you can model this particular photon current. So this justified your photon current value. I hope this is clear for you. Let's go back for mathematical modeling of diode current. So this is what diode current we have already observed. And we are going to put I0 equation in multiplication with that value. Now this is little complicated one, but I hope as you are able to understand the photon current, this is going to be a similar process for us. So here IPV, as like I said, we will have to monitor IPV and VPV, which we should use. So this is nothing but RS into IPV multiplied by, so this RS is series resistance. We have already seen it is 0 0.008 ohm into I. So product of this will be RS into IPV. VPV is given by addition with this summing block. So VPV plus RS IPV is very clear to you. Then we have multiplication of 1.6 into E raised to minus 19. You can see N into eta KT upon Q. So this Q will go upward and we can have it in multiplication. So we actually can multiply Q that is charge on one electron 1.6 into E raised to minus 19. And then at the denominator, we can have these four things in product. So N is the number of sale. Eta is the ideality factor. K is the Boltzmann constant. T is the temperature. You remember at the time of photon current, I told that temperature. So this is go to block and from block. So this is called a signal routing. So we will be using temperature value, which has been already set in photon current. So this temperature value gets multiplied. 1.38 is nothing but your Boltzmann constant K. 36 is nothing but the number of cells. And 1.2 is nothing but the ideality factor N. So this is eta. This is N. This is K. And this is temperature T. So in this way, we are going to model this particular block. Now, this blocking is been at the reciprocal of E. So all this setup is nothing but exponential to the uh, current. So we will need to use this E raised to U block. I will show in MATLAB simulating what does this called as. And this gives the input signal raised to U. So U is nothing but input signal. E raised to U becomes, so at this point, you will get this bracket. And then you will have to uh, add one in it so, so that you will get this particular equation. Now we will have to multiply it by I0. So at this particular point, we will have to add by one I0. I0 is given by, see here now, I0 reference. I0 reference value has been already uh, known to us. Then T upon T0. So here we will get T 1 by T0. So this equation we are going to model in MATLAB. So as like in this equation, we are going to model the current equation for this one. And I will show you the MATLAB value here K4. So let's go back to K. Let's go back to the MATLAB symbolic so that we will be able to visualize the things properly. So K is nothing but that whole equation. 1 points Q into 1.12 upon 1.2 into 1.38. So this is nothing but your uh, N into eta into K into Boltzmann constant. And which is nothing but given to the E raised to U part. So this is standard temperature. 1 upon U gives you a reciprocal. So this is nothing but a mathematical block. Let, let me tell, show you. So you go in the commonly used blocks. There you can have. A math, math operations. In math operations. You will get a math function. And in this math function. You can actually change. Let me open it into the MATLAB file. 
So this will uh, by default will show you e raised to u block. But when you open it, you can get several functions. So you can have exponential, you can have square, you can have reciprocal. So once you select reciprocal, it will become one upon. U. So this is what we have used here, one upon u. So this is one upon t zero at this particular point, and this is our actual temperature. So this is t. So t zero one upon t zero minus one upon t is multiplied by this k block. So k block is nothing but your this value. Q e upon n k t q. Okay, so this will give us this equation. I I hope it is visible now for all of you. So we have modeled this equation in MATLAB, and then it is given to e raised to u. So we here we get exponential part. Then 2.16 into e raised to minus 8 is nothing but our I0 ref I0 reference. And here we again have multiplication of t divided by so see here. This is a block where I have a star and divide factor. So star and divide gives you first as cross and second as uh, division. If I if I add again one star, you can see the change here. See, so it will add a third input it will add a third input so we don't want three parts so just have a multiplication and division so it actual temperature is in multiplication standard temperature is in division so it gives t upon t0 and then multiply by 3 so this is math function now power to the scale so we have given it to 3. So it is giving t upon t0 raised to 3. In this way, you can model the photon current as well. So this, this complete block gives you a photon current value. So try to model it as it is. And you will be definitely able to generate a diode current. So this is one current controlled source. I named it as a photon current, but it is controlled current source. And you 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 should not change these values because we are we are initializing it through the external signal. And this is your second current control source, which we are using as a diode current, but in a reverse way. We have RSH value of 1000 ohm, RSE value 0 0.08, which is which we have used here as well. And then this is current measurement block, current measurement. You can get current measurement directly by browsing. Make sure you are uh, typing the measurement things properly. So if you search current measurement, you can get this block and you can drag it here. Similarly, this is a voltage measurement. You can again connect it. This is go to block and this is uh, again go to block and where you want to reroute it. This is from block. These blocks you can get from signal routing. So this is signal routing. In simulink, you will get signal routing functions. In signal routing, you have the from block and go to block. So from block is the one from which we need to take signal and go to block is used from where we need to divert the signal. And these are output ports which we have already 
seen as connected ports in commonly used blocks. So this is in port and this is out port which we have used. So this is what about the solar cell modeling of the system. When you design it, so what I have done, I have taken input as irradiance 1025, which has been standard to us. Uh, assume that solar cell is getting the maximum efficient value. And in a solar system, we have this uh, subsystem, we have this solar system modeled. Uh, now at this output end, I have connected a voltage measurement uh, and a scope and I have connected a power means current measurement and a scope and now the product of voltage and current see you can see this is a current block and this is a voltage block when these two are getting multiplied we will get the power value okay let's go back to the data sheet once uh, sorry workspace here see this is workspace so in matlab when you apply you might have seen this simulating part where you can use the coding and all but he, this is the workspace now you can see it is blank but if we want to save our variables to matlab or the two workspace we will have to connect it to scope click on the scope click on this configuration parameters go to the logging and here logging you will have to save any variable name and then save it with array click ok similarly two other variables so i have volt saved voltage as output of the solar cell voltage as v then power p and current I current capital I. So I hope the mathematical modeling of all the things is very clear to you. So this is what I have already shown you final solar cell model. I hope you can model it. You can take the screenshot and implement it in MATLAB. Uh, then this is what system look like. So we have a current and voltage measurement. Now this is what we have a standard one solar PV and IV cell. So this is how the solar cells curves should look like. And on the X axis, we will have current and power and on sorry, on X axis, we will have voltage and on Y axis, we will have current and power. So when voltage, sorry, the current when plotted with the voltage, we will get a voltage curve or current curve for voltage so it is called as i v curve when power is plotted for voltage we will get p v curve so blue one is the p versus voltage curve i is the uh, red one is the i versus voltage curve now you can see the point where we have zero voltage obviously it is called as a short circuit voltage and hence the current at which voltage is zero is named as short circuit current and this is the value which should be matched with the data sheet then it will come down to VOC. VOC is nothing but open circuit voltage where current is going to be zero. So at this voltage is also the maximum voltage offered by the, or created by the solar cell. And this should also get matched. Now, when we have to plot the power, this PMP point, like the voltage point, VMP and IMP for respective maximum power. These are also given in data sheet. So these are should be matched with our simulation. So we should have the Simulink or MPPT to operate system at this MP, PMP. So you should model uh, the solar cell which we have obtained. And after obtaining this solar cell, uh, uh, simulation of solar cell, we will be able to generate the IV and PV curves from MATLAB. Let us move towards the Simulink so that we can generate these curves and we can verify whether we should get these curves or not. So this is our complete MPPT model. Before going to that, we need to generate the PV and IV curves as discussed. And in this video, we, are, we need to understand how we can generate the PV and IV curves for different values of radiation, irradiation and temperature later. So what we will do at start, we will be saving this current voltage and power with some name. Let's say, as I already shown you, that one power, power symbol can be shown as it is saved with the value in logging with 
p variable now if let's go back in workspace you cannot see any variable here once you run this simulation or rather i won't say this complete simulation if you just complete this particular block of solar cell and connect v and i you will be able to visualize the voltage and current at this particular part so once you run this simulation you will be able to see the saved data of v i and p in workspace so see here this data like i p and v these has been generated as i already discussed that how we are going to tackle this so whenever it saves with array the matlab saves any function with array it saves it in two columns the first column is a time column so as you can see let me show you our uh, discrete time signal so in this power gui block we have sample time as 50 e raised to minus 7 that is 5 e raised to minus 6 so every 5 microsecond matlab is going to generate a new value and hence you will be able to see the number of values with the interval of 5 microsecond each so you can see all these values and respective to that value this is these are the voltage magnitudes for each graph now we are not interested to plot time versus voltage we are interested to plot voltage and current so if if we can see this is this is i graph now i is again we have same values so that is the beautiful nature of matlab that it will plot the time signal at the same intervals so all the complete first column of v and complete first column of i will be exactly similar so we just need to plot the respective second column of v and i to generate iv plot so we expect that this has to be this kind of red colored iv graph and blue colored pv graph should be uh, generated in matlab for voltage sorry power and current across voltage so voltage has to be on x axis current and power on the y axis now let's see how to generate these curves in matlab so the normal command for matlab is plot x y so that justifies plot of x axis and then y axis means if you want some variable on x axis like as usually we have time on the x axis so we should take t on the first side and comma the magnitude or the value which we are expected to plot but in our case for pv curve and iv curve we want voltage as the x-axis and power as the y-axis so in pv curve we will have power on y-axis and voltage on x-axis now for this as we have just discussed that matlab has two columns first column will be time and second column will be the magnitude of voltage and similarly for the power so we need to map only the second column of that array so this will can be the command like plot obviously this p is going to be small plot v colon comma 2 so colon comma 2 justifies all the colon stands for all values respective to second column and p all values respective to second column so this command we will be plotting in matlab before that just cross check that your variables v and p are with the capital symbol if you have any voltage name or let's say you can save it with your name xyz so it has to be with your command so uh, just see that this is your power versus voltage curve and i think you should be able to map the highest point so see this is the the highest point is 63.68 or rather something much better 63.72 so in the range of 63 you have a power maximum power and the respective voltage is 17.897 so almost on 18 so this is what you have vmp at the maximum power now similarly we will try to plot the current graph plot now we want iv curve so again v is going to be on the x axis so v colon comma 2 comma i colon comma 2 
So this is your IV curve. Now you can see the short circuit current is in the range of 3.799. So that is 3.8. And that is what we have discussed in our PPT. So see the short circuit current is 3.8. So that justifies our values are getting matched with the simulation. And you need to see the current at maximum voltage. So you, if you need to remember, or we rather can merge these two waveforms. So this is your first task to generate the separate IV curve and separate PV curve. You can label all these things by using the edit command. Like you can act, go in the figure property. You can go in the access properties. So these are access properties in which you can actually plot or you can have the names. So X label, Y label, all these things. So here you can change voltage in volts. Similarly, you again can go on X level. Okay, so try to change the names in X axis and Y axis. We will now try to overlap the two signal, two waveforms. So let me close this one. So what we can use is the hold command. First, we can use. So I will plot this. Then it will generate the graph without closing. Without closing this graph, you need to type here hold on. And then you just need to change and plot the second graph. So it won't pop up already because we have it closed. So now this is what we have, the IV curve and the PV curve. So the magnitude of IV is around three. So it will be shown in this way. And the magnitude of a P is in the range of 60. So it will be higher. And this is the assignment that you can actually export the figures or save the figures, save as, and it will directly ask you in which format you need to save the image. So you can save it with IVPV curves, any means any name. So I hope uh, till this part, I have made each and every function very clear to you. Okay. So let us go back and now try to understand for next task, like to use the boost converter. Now boost converter is the converter which actually gives you the stable voltage at the end. So in input, it will have a variable DC and at output, it will have a constant DC. Plus in association with this, you can actually increase the voltage. But in our simulation, the main objective of boost converter is not to only increase voltage, but to operate the solar panel at MPPT, like maximum power tracking point. So we want the voltage level to be on that particular point. So let's go back to the PPT. See this uh, waveform. So this is PMP. So this is maximum power. And this is respective VMP. So the output voltage or the output taken by solar cell must be 
in this particular span. So it has to be near to VMP. And that is what objective of push converter is. Based on the load, we, if load increases, what will happen? The voltage will drag down. And based on that, it should increase the voltage. And if there is a low load, so voltage will get increased. And if voltage goes on increasing, power again decreases. So at that particular value, you need to again maintain that voltage to VMP. So that is what boost converter is going to be uh, doing. But the boost converter will have one inductor, a switch and a diode. So this switch will be controlled by MPPT. And before MPPT, we should understand the con simulation of boost converter. So see in this diagram, we need one inductor, one switching device and one diode. And this capacitor is the smoothening capacitor or we can say ripple capacitor which we usually use at the end of the load that is that can be called as a filter so this is the simulation so at both the ends i have two capacitors one is at the input side another is that the output side before that i have one inductor one switch and a diode this is what we learn it theoretically and this gate pulse will be generated by mppt Let us verify this by simulation. So see here you can do, this is the MPPT block, but uh, this is our series RLC load. Uh, and these are the three things like inductor, IGBT and diode. So if you want to search this block, it will be IGBT. And if you want to search this block, it will be a diode. So these are all default values. I have not changed any value in it. Capacitor values you can change based on your rating of the system i kept it at 100 microfarad for this capacitor and 100 microfarad for another capacitor load i have kept of 15 ohm you can change or you uh, for this simulation it is 97 ohm you can change the load values to any extent and analyze how the system behaves for every change in the load now MPPT. So before uh, moving towards MPPT, I would like to clarify that uh, if you want to just see, you can only simulate this particular part, like uh, only creating solar cell with these two radiations and temperature and the IV and PV curves. Uh, you can you can only simulate this boost converter separately, like uh, taking any DC constant source here and then operating this without the MPPT, like you can directly give any gate pulse. And gate pulse can be given by pulse block. So this pulse generator you can use. to generate the any kind of a constant pulse. So you can use a pulse generator of 50% duty cycle. Time period is 10 seconds, but make sure your simulation time is one second. So you should change that time period to let's say 0 0.01. Uh, and then width of the percentage width. So what it is asking percentage of the period. So width pulse width has to be 50. Like turn on time is equal to turn off time. So 50% will be turn on and 50% remaining 50% will be turn off. Based on this, you can use this pulse generator block and you can basically connect it to pulse generator and simulate the signal. Okay. Now let us understand the working of MPPT first. Now let's go back on this curve. What MPPT does So at start, when we are operating the solar panel, let's assume that at any particular time, we have this particular voltage. Let's say V1. For this V V1, if you plot the IV curve, so the respective current graph is here. So it will be somewhere here. So current will be this. Now, based on these two multiplication, this is power. So we can say this is P1. Now, at this point, means when MPPT operates, it will try to see the very next measurement of V2. 
very next measurement of the I2, the respective measurement. You remember we have seen the arrays like of after every five microsecond, we have the next signal generation in MATLAB. So let me show you back it again. So let me go to workspace, see. So MATLAB checks first value at this level, uh, five microsecond, then one, 10 microsecond, 15 microsecond, 20 microsecond. In that way, it generates every value. And for every respective same value, it again generates the voltages. Now, what the MPPT's work is to just cross-check every time how the symbol is going to be. So, every time it will try to check the voltage and current value. Based on voltage and current, we know that P is equal to V into I for DC. And we are operating it on DC. So, V into I product has to be go on increasing. See this nature of the curve. It is on increasing mode at start means up to the point of VMP. We have the graph on increasing mode. So, when voltage is increasing for every next interval, based on with respect to that, if power is again increasing, then this is good for MPPT. Like MPPT will check every time that if voltage is increasing, the first condition satisfies. The second condition, if power is increasing, yes. Because after VMP, what happens? After M VMP, you can see, even if there is a change in voltage, see from VMP this point to VOC, voltage is increasing, but power is decreasing. So we don't want this to happen. So Let's assume that at this particular point, at this particular point, we have some duty cycle. So basically, MPPT actually increases or decreases width of the pulse so that of to the boost converter so that the voltage magnitude will go on increasing. And if we want the voltage to be reduced, then it will see, it will check and it will create a pulse so that voltage will get decreased. And if voltage decreases, power will again be respective with that particular voltage. So assume that your first one of the point of checking is this one. At this point, the voltage is his. Now at this PMP point, which is highlighted in the graph. Now this second point voltage is increased, which is very good thing. So voltage is increasing and power is also increasing. So what MPPT will do at this particular point, it will increase the boost level or it will increase the pulse cycle and it will go on increasing the voltage. Now at this particular time, as the previous condition was to increase the voltage, next condition it will again give to increase the voltage. So at this point, voltage is on increasing node, but you can see the power goes on decreasing. As power decreases, MPPT realizes that the voltage which has been increasing should not happen and hence we need to decrease the duty cycle. And hence, again, MPPT asks the voltage to go with a lesser magnitude. MPPT, as voltage decreases, it tries to maintain up to this zone. So this is what MPPT does. Its work is to operate system at this respective voltage. So these two points need to be satisfied, VMP and IMP. These points are had to be satisfied. So this is what MPPT does. Now let's try to see the algorithm of P and O algorithm, perturb and observe algorithm, that how it operates. So see here, MPPT starts and measures V and I N. So it will try to measure V and I N. It will calculate power. Now for next interval, like it will try to again measure VNI, again measure PN, and it will try to compare the powers, like whether the difference between this power and previous power is equal to zero or not. If the difference between two powers is zero, it will go directly to the return path. And again, it will start. So if there is no change, it will directly return. Next onward, it will again try to measure. If the, it is not same, the powers are not same, now it will check whether the new condition minus previous condition power is greater or not. If this subtraction is higher, means power is on increasing mode. That is good thing. If power is on increasing mode is yes, 
then this side. If no, then this side. Now let's see what is happening when power is on increasing side. If power increases, it will check whether voltage is increasing or not. Because you can see the curve in this particular point. Suppose our moment is from this moment to upper moment. We are from this point to this point. Power is increasing, but voltage is decreasing. So we should want again voltage to go on decreasing side. It is not like the voltage is decreasing, but power is increasing good thing. So this is what we need to understand. So here, if power increases and same voltage also increases, then okay, the duty cycle will be the previous duty cycle minus the difference. But if this is not the condition, then it will go on adding the duty cycle so that voltage goes on decreasing so that power is on the negative side of the increasing mode or on the graph. Similarly, if power is on increasing mode or sorry, the power is not increasing. So this power or current power is lesser than the previous power. So we have this path where if voltage is less than the previous voltage, Again, we need to reduce the duty cycle. If voltage is higher than the previous voltage, we need to increase the duty cycle. This is very simple algorithm and it is called as P and O, perturb and observe. Many students don't know the P and O meaning. So it is P and P and O. That means perturb and observe. So perturb stands for analyze and observe stands for understanding or seeing. So measure and check, measure and check, that is what this algorithm does. So let's try to see the MATLAB simulating. So these are nothing but voltage and current values in MATLAB. So I would like to show you, this is our MATLAB block. You can create a subsystem again. So this is MATLAB subsystem where first point is voltage. Second point of measurement is current. So two quantities are given to this particular MPPT block. And this whole algorithm is what we have just seen. So what, what is happening here, we can see that the voltage and current are getting multiplied. This is one memory block. So this gives a previous current power and then it stores in the memory of the previous signal and then it gets compared. So pre current minus previous will give you one change in the power. And this is just a voltage graph. So again, change in the voltage. So when product is positive, means both the changes are positive, means voltage is also increasing and power is also increasing, then it will increase the negative duty cycle. Uh, the, the product will be given negative and this is what saturation, this is a saturation block. This gives you duty cycle uh, or the change in the value that 0 0.001. You can try and out these values and you can change as per your requirement. Let's go in MATLAB simulating. So what are the values I have put in this? So no need to check, uh, put values in memory block. It just only saves the previous value. This is a constant block with value minus one. So here multiplication does. So suppose if voltage voltage change is positive, power change is positive, both, multi, both are positive, then the product will be multiplied with this negative. So negative into positive will become negative. And then this signal function, SIGN. So signum gives the real inputs for output one for positive. So see for real inputs, like for output one for positive, minus one for negative and zero for zero. So if we are going to give minus one, it will provide minus one. If we are going any positive value, it will be minus one. Any negative value, it will be uh, negative value, negative one. So it is basically giving one magnitude between one, zero and minus one. So if the, this product is positive due to this minus one, this product will become negative. And hence, 
uh, this will provide a negative pulse minus one magnitude now minus one multiplied by this will be getting added in the memory block and getting compared with the triangular frequency so this is what uh, where you actually generates the pulse you might have seen sinusoid spwm technique so uh, this is triangular pulse width generation and these two are rotational relational operators. You can change this related operator to greater than also, and you can change this value of uh, repeating pulse also. So how this value gives this zero and one divided by 10,000. So output values are zero and one. So for every time value, like first value will be zero and second value will be this one divided by 10,000. Third value will be two divided by 10,000. And for every output value, it will give 0, 1, again 0, 1, 0, 1. So it will generate a repeating sequence. I can show you this uh, triangular pulse. So see, this is triangular pulse. So every for dropping pulse, it generates a positive cycle whenever it gets compared with the value. And this pulse is being provided to the IGBT. So this IGBT is connected to boost converter. And this is how we have a complete simulation of MPPT connected solar cell. So you can check the output voltages, output current. This is output current. Let me give you the output voltage. So this is what your MPPT output voltage is. See, at start the voltage was dropping around 20, but the MPPT, this is this phenomena, this rise from 0 second to 0 0.4 justifies that your MPPT is working really well. And once the voltage is at around that value, you give you get the uh, don't don't misjudge your reading between this value and uh, your MPPT graph. So what we had earlier. So you remember our voltage of maximum point was around 17. So you can see the MPPT voltage. See, this is around in the range of 17. If you can see that this is 20 and 15. So somewhere in between 17. So this is VMP graph. But what the graph we were seeing here, this is a boost converter graph. So this is boosted voltage. Don't misjudge your voltage like it is between 70 voltage for solar cell. Your voltage for uh, solar cell was 17. So VMP point was 17. I hope I have made all the aspects of your simulation very clear uh, till the MPPT. This is our overall system as like we have shown. 
this graph we were able to generate like 17.9 and 62 so 17.9 and 3.8 something 3.5 or so 3.8 so these are vmp and mpp now we need to generate this graph and this is really interesting one now see every current every peop, uh, every time when we discuss about the change in temperature uh, i would like to show this diagram so this is the pv curve for change in voltage but see this is the pv curve for change in temperature so when temperature is 25 this was the graph when temperature is 35 this is the graph and when temperature is uh, increasing for to 50 this is the graph so power is increasing and this we need to validate so what we say that based on the temperature so this is i and v curve so as temperature increases from 25 to 50 this is the change in the output voltage so how we can do that in simulation so let me clear, clear the workspace first Now, these are our P, V and I graphs already generated. We need to rename the blocks with some other values so that we can have all in one together. So now we need to generate, let's say this is irradiance and thousand. We already have the graphs of voltage, current and power for thousand. Let's do it for 800. So we won't change temperature, but we will change the irradiation. So this is 800. Now for this 800 graph, we will be generating this voltage. But if I run this directly, what will happen? It will overlap the P and I curves because I have not changed the name. So let us change the names with respect to 800 now for logging purpose. So as this is I, I will replace it as I 800. I will replace the voltage to v800 and power to p800 now i can run this simulation so that earlier variables will not get overlap okay so see we have i for earlier case, P for earlier case, V for earlier case, and 800, uh, like irradiance 800. So we can plot these two all together. So let us just again have a practice of that command. So we will have plot. Then on X axis, let's say we are plotting IV curve. So V colon comma two comma I. colon comma two bracket complete this will generate a graph now don't close this just minimize the graph say hold on and then again write on same command but with v800 and i800 and enter so go back to the figure, you will be able to see two different graphs. So this is for 800 graph, uh, sorry, 1000 graph. This is for 800. So in this way, you will be able to see all the values all together. If you want the power curves, you can again say, uh, I will just change I with P. Go back to the system you will have two different graphs for voltage and current these are for the change in irradiance so we are changing the standard irradiance was thousand 
but we were expecting it now to the 800. You can replace again this for 600, 400 or any value from 0 to 1000, anything. And you can generate the graphs. Let us just change this to 1000 again so that we can vary to date our change in temperature. So let's now change temperature to 35 and do the similar process. Now, again, I will have to change this logging to 35. And let's run it again. So now here we have 35 related symbols as well. So we can now plot IV and PV curves for change in the temperature. This is for 1000. We can say hold on and here we need to plot for 35 so these are the two graphs for change in the temperature so accordingly you can graph change in temperature for iv and pv curves i hope this simulation you will find completely uh, clear and transparent one. I made sure that I'm not hiding any value in the solar simulation. Also, I have showcased you all the values, each and every aspect. And I have shown you all the things in MPPT block as well. I don't think I have hidden, I have any part hidden. Uh, still, if you find any query, you can write it to me. You can comment. And you can actually tell if you are actually working on this system and you are able to execute the MPPT connected solar cell with maximum value, then please write it to me and it will really boost me up to create these kind of videos for you. Thank you for watching my video. Thank you for your patience hearing. I know this video is going on a very long time and it will take you around two, three days to simulate it in complete way rigorously but still if you do it properly you will definitely get the results thank you